Hello, this is Jesse Jackson. Charles and I um, will be back soon to talk more Doctor Who. But in the meantime, here is a recording of a fan discussion about the Doctor Who spinoff class that was recorded during Dragon Con on Labor Day 2017. I hope you enjoyed the discussion. I thought it was a fair representation of what was good about the show and what we hoped to see more of. However, after this was recorded, we found out the show was canceled, so it will now be just left as what could have been. Hope you enjoyed the discussion. Go ahead and get started. Just be, um, and if people walk in, that's okay. You can leave the door cracked a little bit um, just because, you know, people hopefully will come. Um, if not, that's okay. We'll have a good party. Talk about it. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself and the people who are up here. And um, then I'm going to uh, read our panel description and then we'll kind of chit chat about um, our topic for today for this panel. And um, how we do our panels, if you've never sat in the Brit Track Room before, is that we have kind of an exchange between the audience and, and us up here. So you're not just like sitting here listening to us talk the whole time. So um, and since there's not a lot of us in the room, we don't really need to get up and use the microphones. Just you know, go ahead and project from the diaphragm and, um, and, and you can share your thoughts and opinions on what we're having. So we encourage fan discussion. Um, my name is Caro and I am the Brit Track Director. I have been on staff for Dragon Con for 16 years. And this is my 12th year running the Brit Track. So I'm like... So you were 10 when you started? Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, 10 when I started. No, um, but yeah, you know, it, it's been a long journey and a long haul. And um, I'm so excited to have our new space and to be here. So especially talk about a, a finally another spinoff. So I'm super excited. Um, and you go ahead and introduce yourself. So I am Jesse Jackson. I look different than I do on TV. Yes, that is the fourth <laughs> panel I've been on. And it's each time I've made the same joke. Uh, I am a podcaster. I do a Doctor Who podcast called Next Stop Everywhere. Um, I also do a, I'm part of the Game, a Game of Thrones podcast, Small Council Matters, and then I also do a Bruce Springsteen fandom podcast, uh, Set Lusting Bruce, and if you want to know the story behind that title, you can come see me. And I'm excited to talk class. Awesome. I am, excuse me, I'm Shannon Burgess. I am the Bird Chat staff member. I've been on staff for seven years. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Aaron Dunn. Um, I was born in the UK, lifelong Doctor Who fan, and this is my doing my math 25th Dragon Con. Awesome. Woo. Woo -woo. That's a long time from here. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> also, so the title of this panel is class, and the description is um, the first scripted Doctor Who spinoff in years has finally aired in the US, and it definitely left an impression with a cameo, several Easter eggs, and a surprise cliffhanger that makes us want more. Class is now in session. So, um, starting, I mean, it's, we have a spinoff, right? Like, finally. And I was surprised at the choice in the spinoff um, because there's been rumors for so long about a unit spinoff. And um, it's been in the works for, God, since, like, what, the 70s? They've mm -hmm. talked about a unit spinoff. And so when the rumors first came out um, that there would be one, I, I was thinking, okay, finally we're going to have this spinoff. And um, I was setting myself up to be a little disappointed when I found out what, it, what the premise for the spinoff was. Um, but then I watched the very first episode, and I was like, okay, I am totally hooked. This is really good. Um, so what was your first impression, and we'll start with Aaron, um, of hearing about the spinoff, not actually watching the show, just knowing that there was one? I just heard of, I just heard of the spinoff right before I saw it. Mm -hmm. I was like, BBC America is showing class, and I was like, what? I was like, oh, Doctor Who! Okay, uh, I'll check it out. And um, watched the first episode, my first thought was, it's Doctor Who, it's very Buffy-esque, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Buffy-esque is not a bad thing. I was a huge, huge fan of Buffy. Uh, enough years have gone by that it's not um, just a quick and dirty copy. And um, I liked some of the plot lines in there and watched the whole series, and I really hope to make another one. Okay. Shannon, what do you think? Well, as you said, I mean, I didn't find out until at least a couple, of, at least a couple of weeks before it aired, and they did show a little bit of the... Uh, Capaldi and I was like, oh, 
a Doctor Who mm -hmm. spinoff. And I watched the first episode, and I'm like, okay. I gave it a chance. And at first, I really didn't like it at first, and then I watched the second, and I was like, okay. It's getting better and better. And then after that, I just got hooked. Mm -hmm. And you? So, do you guys remember The Muppet Show? The two grumpy old men in the balcony? <laughs> Picture me. I really did not like this series at all. Um, and I, I just, I, I'm, I, I made a point in our podcast that um, the Billy's friends on Knock Knock, I cared more about them in that one episode than I cared about any of the cast in class that whole the whole season so i've stuck with it and i'm gonna go to the next season it's because it's doctor who and um so i'm, I'm the loyal opposition in today's panel so awesome this should be interesting <laughs> um uh so i i think that the the thing about the show um that it came out is that it was it when the first trailers came out it was like is this a kid's show you know is is this what this is is this just another like Canine and Company or Sarah Jane Adventures that we're gonna go on this weird ride with? And so I was very skeptical um, in the very beginning. And there were points where, you know, I I was like, ah, come on, really? And then there are other t points where I was like, oh, okay, like that was that was a fun romp. romp. But I, I kind of had to just like suspend after the first episode that this was a Doctor Who spinoff. You know, like it, it kind of lost that kind of kind of framework a little bit for me um yeah. and i don't know if i appreciate the show because it is buffy-esque and i'm a huge buffy fan <clears throat> and um it, it it almost reminded me of a show called uh, called hex i don't know if anyone's seen that yes, um, it <laughs> yeah but it but it kind of felt like that a little bit um and which is also in the vein of buffy um, so I, I think that for me, like I, I write, it's like I wrote a wave of like, right. I, I like it, but I don't like it, you know, and it's like trying something that you don't want to eat for the first time. <laughs> and, and I think part of my problem is that I, I, I so desperately wanted a, for lack of another words, real Doctor Who spinoff. And, you know, we talked about, like, I have this fan fantasy that they bring back, you know, Jamie, the actor who played Jamie and his granddaughter, um, is, becomes a companion. So uh, I, I really thought it'd be interesting if we had a stronger connection to the doctor that besides the school that maybe a former companion was a teacher or, or something and, and, and dealt with the tr trauma of post-traumatic stress of no longer traveling with the doctor. So uh, I, I am going to rewatch it before season two and try to change, as you said, don't think of it as a Doctor Who spinoff, think of it as its own and see if it stands better with a second watching. To me, I think it's, it kind of read almost like a teenage version of Torchwood. Yeah. yeah. You know, we have the alien, Captain Jack. He has his boyfriend, Yanto. We have the footballer, Owen. You know, we have the, uh, was the black girl, she was the Tosh, and the uh, April is our Gwen. That's how I kind of read it, in a way. Okay. So now, I, I think that, um, <coughs> I think the show was not made for <coughs> us, mm -hmm. for the long time older visitor, uh, viewers. I think this is a show that's built to build on the audience for the Sarah Jane Adventures. And it's a couple of years since then. There were about 16, 17, 18 primarily. Mm -hmm. So this is something, hey, you love the Sarah Jane Adventures? Here's something more in your age group mm -hmm. again. And I think that's what it was aiming to get, rather than you know the codgers like me who've been watching Doctor Who for dear God in heaven 40 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, you might be, you might be right. Um, would you say it has been renewed for a sex season? It has not, as far as we know, yeah. unless anybody knows difference. No, it ha and like it hasn't been announced yet. I know that it's on the list to be like the next go round, so probably will be sometime this fall. Yeah. Um, when we'll actually know whether or not it'll be renewed. Um, that's usually they usually you know put their put their renewals out in batches, so we'll probably know. Hopefully, maybe come November, December, whether or not it will actually be picked up again. 
Um, and what's what's interesting is that it, to, to piggyback off of what you're saying, Aaron, about the show being put in place to fill the void that is Sarah Jane Adventures, but it's it's to me it's like not even appropriate for um, for for that age group. But how, long ago, how long ago was the Sarah Jane Adventures? Because we kind of forget, you know, the number of years that the show has been off. I, I don't really know, but I know that it's probably been at least seven, six, seven years, right? Right. Um, so it has been a while. I mean, there's been a gap in time, but I'm just talking about the tropes and the, and mm-hmm. the and the things that are discussed in the show. And I know, I you know, someone was talking to me um, the other day about it. And we talked about the fact that the 11 and 13 and 13 year olds are now almost more mature because of the advent of the access to the internet and exposure to things at a younger age and that it is still a show for the tween and teenager because it addresses that those kind of things but at the same time I'm like I don't know like I still think that the show doesn't feel, doesn't have that innocence that I you know the first episode yes the first episode sure you know I had the innocence and the fe- the family friendly you know side to Doctor Who as well as Sarah Jane but when you get into some of the other episodes it's There's, like yeah. whoa like, like, <laughs> they're getting caught like by the mom and <laughs> You know, there's all these other things that are that they're dealing with that is interesting and 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 is more, I'd say for an older teenager mm-hmm. maybe yeah. if you know considering parental comfort and um you, to like I'd say maybe in like your twenties early twenties you know thirties I don't know like I don't even know like how to describe it but it's definitely not a show for kids. Four well, kids in that that's way. That's why I respectfully submit is the the audience that used to watch Sarah Jane, who are 12, 13, 14, are now in their early 20s. Yeah. So yeah that's, okay. I, I, they, that, that's what I would think, given given the years. And we may be wrong. Yeah. Did you have a comment? Um, so what do you define as a kid? Well, I mean, I, I think that it's it's a matter of, for me, it, I don't think it's age, to be honest. I think it's a level of maturity. Yeah. Um, to be frank, to be frank, um, I think that <coughs> if you have, you don't have that kind of exposure to those kinds of things for whatever reason, um, you know, I could be a kid, I'm 35, you know, I kind of consider myself a child sometimes, but you know, it, it's a matter of maturity and level of comfort and being able to talk about those kinds of things and, um, and have an opinion on it. You know what I mean? So I think that. For me, it, you know, I don't have children of my own, but um, I do have I have friends who have, you know, tweens, you know, um, and for kids, and, and they don't allow their their kids to watch it. Um, versus, I have another friend of mine who's, you know, thirteen year old, loves the show and watches it. So, you know, I think that it's just a matter of comfort for the family as well as, you know, the maturity of this of the kid, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Completely mm-hmm. agree with you. And I actually also went on that roller coaster of like, I think I, I didn't like it. And then I was like, oh, and then I was like, uh, and then I was like, uh. So, yeah, I actually, for in my view, for kids or, or young adults, like, I think what got me more so than the sex scene, mm-hmm. you know, or that issue, although I don't think that the show actually dealt with that enough, like, fine, let her. I actually am okay with like 15, 16 year old watching and seeing that as long as the mom is now like, look, sex is very serious. Like you can't, she just was like, what are you doing? Ah!" And it wasn't addressed appropriately to me if you're trying to make a point. But then also the murder, like I think that's what I would be more concerned about. It's like, wasn't it the first episode when the the girlfriend was murdered like shamelessly? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, even me like grown, I was like, Right, where's this coming from? Like, just yeah, I was, that was, I guess that would be my issue with, for letting like you know, like, like that and making people feel or kids feel desensitized mm-hmm. to that over time if that's the whole point of the series. Yeah, the and then you had it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a question and a statement. I'm sorry. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, no, no. um, this was was this originally programmed for both. BBC and BBC America, or do they do it for BBC and just know that they can market it to us? They 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 originally wrote this this the original script went 
to the BBC first. So the 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 idea for the show went through the BBC first before it was it was shared BBC America. So a lot of people don't know that um, BBC and BBC America are are not they're non affiliated. Yeah, that's what companies. That, I, I know that part. That's why I was BBC, asking. BBC America did invest a lot of money in it initially. Mm-hmm. This was one of the first. And and it showed it was shown in Brit Britain first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know that's because was, if you. I, yeah. If they, you wanted, you could find a way to see it. And it aired initially in Britain at 10 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Oh. Yes. oh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's actually oh, that's a Saturday? Saturday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Saturday. They do have a higher... Mm-hmm. They do have a higher... On, on BBC3. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, like, the, 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 the Culturally, thing... Culturally, they have a higher acceptance of yeah. showing uh, sex and being more open about that conversation mm-hmm. than we are things to us Puritans, <laughs> mm-hmm. but uh, the violence, like you said, that that is not really a That's high, surprising. That's Like cops don't even me. carry guns. Yeah, to, exactly, to and like now. the violence in movies, or violence in shows mm-hmm. coming out of the BBC have never been, that was more graphic than anything on Doctor Who. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Like, that, I agree, like, but the, the sex stuff, very shocking for being on them. BBC America, not so much yeah. for yeah. BBC America, uh, just regular BBC, except I didn't know it was 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's a very unusual, yeah. just that is. posted on, on, on the net, and I was like, wow. Yeah. When but it was posted on a channel that is yeah, three. intended for more adult content, yeah. mm-hmm. we'll say that. Let's when see. I initially saw the promos, which I saw on Facebook months and months and months, and then I found out it wasn't going to be shown. The initial promos made it look very Doctor Who esque, and I was super excited and super excited. And then I saw it, and about halfway through the first episode, I was like, "This is nothing. This has no Doctor Who feel to it, other than the one cameo." Like she said, it definitely felt more like Hex or some of the other BBC shows that you know you watch, but it didn't. So. I very quickly forgot that it was a spinoff, more or less, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and enjoyed it for what it was, but would never have let her watch it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely no, not. <laughs> but it was um, definitely not what I expected. But I did, not I enjoyed it for what it was. But it definitely did not feel the least bit like Who to me mm-hmm. at all. And, and I think that may be my biggest problem. And also, I. I didn't like many of the characters. You know, I, I I have to find someone that I'm cheering for. That I, you know, to really enjoy a TV show, there's got to be some kind of journey or a character that I'm rooting for. And I, like I said, I just didn't. And and I th- I think I'm going to watch it again with that mm-hmm. Torchwood perspective. And yeah. maybe if I put those Torchwood, you know, sunglasses on, um, it might feel better. Um, especially since Torchwood was my entry into the Doctor Who universe. I watched okay. it first. Oh, wow. And, and, and that's interesting. So, I mean, I think that you you struggle... When you have a show... Let me back up. When you have a show that is Scooby-Doo-esque, um, insofar as you have, like, multiple... You have a, a big cast. Right. And when you have a big cast, it's either you need to have this grandiose large cast where there's vignettes of each, you know, person... Um, like Game of Thrones or it, it, anything along those lines where you have this massive cast and then they have little vignettes that all tie together or you have a very small group um, that that you know are, are works together like the doctor and a companion and and they focus in on that um, I think when you hit around like five or six like you start to like lose a little bit and it gets a little a, a little a little muddy um, and you have to be careful of balancing as a writer, you know, to, uh, who gets so much screen time and who gets developed and who doesn't. Um, and I think that they tried to balance each character out like so much, like dip into each character, all those episodes, and they just didn't have enough. It's almost like they wrote it to be longer um, and be more episodes. And then they they kind of compacted it down into into these um, individual ones. And 
and I think that we don't get we got too much of of whoever and they should have waited to tell a little bit more um, like Charlie's boyfriend I can't remember what his name is uh, Mateus Mateus, Ma- Mateus. Yes. Mateus. Yeah. like I don't think we needed his backstory this season you know to know where he came from and about the struggle with his his parents um, I think they could, they could have left it alone and just had him there and then next season kind of delved into him mm-hmm. And, and, and things like that. And even Quill. Quill could have been a mystery. You know, the the what, the reason why they're even together, you know, Charlie and Quill, um, the whole... I could have been fine. I would have been fine with not knowing um, th- at all what their relationship was outside <laughs> of you're an, you're an alien, you know. Um, so I think things like that. It's like they threw everything in to, to give the producers and the people who are saying yes and putting the stamp on whether or not they're going to renew the show. Um, they gave them bite sizes of everything it's like you know you, when you eat too much too many appetizers at once you you kind of get overwhelmed you know and i do think it only eight episodes um you know it's unfair for like someone like me who's fi- judging it and finding it short is it was only eight episodes did they find their you know usually we give my wife and i we have the rule if it's a new show we give it three or four episodes before we go yay or nay well, that's half a season with this one, and so mm-hmm. you, you you figure they they were trying to find their footing and, and find their voice. So, um, like I said, I'm I'm hopeful if we get another season, because you know it's Doctor Who universe, so I want to support it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, I, I think part of the uh, problem that they had is on the Doctor Who spinoffs that have worked, you met the characters on Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they already had the fan base for those characters, so when they split off, you went with them. Yes. Mm-hmm. I didn't even recognize any of them. I think, I think the, uh, t- uh, the, the character of Tanya, I think she had been in, 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 the, Coal, in the Coal Hill School. There was one, uh, the, uh, there, was a black, there was a black girl who was a, a that pupil. One that was Clara's student? Was it the, was it the same one? I don't think it was the same. But there wasn't enough there to tie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was, there had been some they talk were, about her possibly being a companion. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, again, it, whether that was enough to establish her is a yeah, good question. Yeah, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, who are all these people? Yeah. And then they kind of put, like, each episode was one person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it's a group of people who were thrown together, and they are still trying to figure out at the end of the season how they get on. And they don't necessarily get on there. Not all of them want to be in that group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of it's kind of interesting. Um, and does anybody remember the 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 movie The Faculty? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why. When I every time I watch a show, it reminds me of that, and I I have no idea why. And it might be um, I can't remember the episode, the episode um, the giant monster episode um, the, coming through the, the portal. Coach with, the coach with a dragon tattoo. Um, yes, and um, and in in that episode, I was like, I don't know why. I'm like thinking of of, of it this way, and. and I think that it's interesting that there was there's just too much going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, did I enjoy it? Yes, I did. You know, did I um, did I kind of get the feels for Charlie and his struggle mm-hmm. a couple of times? Sure. I mean, did it make me cry? No. But um, you know, I definitely related to the what's the footballers? Um, Ram. Wow. Ram. Awesome. He was probably the character I connected with. Me too. Um, was Ram. Yes. I thought I thought the acting was really good. If he hadn't been if he honestly had not been as good as he was, I don't think I would have continued to to watch the show after, <laughs> to be frank, yeah. after like four or five episodes and it, it took me uh, you know, um the instant that his devastation at his girlfriend and the emotion yeah. mm-hmm. that he had to evoke for that part and then carry it through like that was consistent and his parents relationship was nice it's it's sometimes it's it's a nice for a change of pace that you you know i i now have a 28 year old son but trust me during the teenage years there were my wife famously said he's staying in college because if he moves back home i'll kill him or he'll kill me and and college is cheaper than a lawyer. Uh, <laughs> so I understand that angst, but it was nice seeing it. Um, I thought your your point about the Scooby Gang is mm-hmm. a really great one. And, you know, the, there's the new version of It coming out. And, 
and I love the book when it came out. I, I love the miniseries, but the idea of these kids getting together and bonding because of the experience. Um, so I think that's what they were trying for. I just don't know if they executed it as well as I would have liked to see it. Well, I, I think that, uh, that the, the part of them actually bonding was there were several members of that group did not want to be in the group. They had been thrown together. The doctor said, okay, you are going to defend the universe. Mm -hmm. See ya. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. you know, Quill was forced to be part of it. She had no choice. The doctor is like, I'm punishing, this is a punishment for killing that student. You will protect these kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was left no choice. Yeah. I will say that I kind of like the fact that they all, like, even at the end, don't want to be there. Because I feel like it gives you the opportunity to kind of develop that bond mm -hmm. versus it right off the bat. Everyone's like, hey, yes, we're going to do this. And then it, I think in my mind it would have just been trite and a little bit irritating. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I definitely agree, I think, with some of the earlier comments that in watching it, I was thinking, there's no way. I mean, I just, that this would be appropriate in my mind for someone who is not necessarily has a higher level of maturity. I think, you know, I have a 13 year old niece and I thought no way in the world would I even let her consider watching this yeah. for some time. Um, mm. And I definitely think it was, I agree kind of with the violent statements, um, especially at the end with Quill having, um, I can't remember what it's called, having it removed from her brain. The bug. I, just thought, the bug. I mean, yeah. there were times when I was like, ooh, I'm not sure I can continue down that path. Right. And, and then, then the look on her face when she's like, it's out. Mm -hmm. like yes. she's great you know like honestly, yeah. Yeah. like she like I, i'd say ram would be my first favorite and then cool would be would be my second favorite and i was like any minute now this is gonna get really good and you know and, and like i said like there's it's it, there's so much in eight episodes that it, it's almost like they needed 13 you know mm -hmm. um and that's usually about as long as most um, British shows tend to be that are like that um, and, and they had so they had so much going on I think the turning point for me was the the episode with the the flowers yes uh, right uh, like lost. that scares me like that's terrifying to me I was actually legitimately like uncomfortable with I'd never really thought of that idea before. Um, you know, it's almost like the bir birds esque, you know, Hitchcockian kind of concept. And I loved that. I was like, all right, here we go. Now we're cooking. And what's going on with the governors? Like, mm -hmm. that, that to me was, it, it wants me, that makes me want to watch the next season. But also, I don't know if I'm watching it because it's like, okay, the train wreck's coming. Or, like, I'm watching this because I actually, like, started to enjoy it, right? It's, it, and I, it's like when you eat some, I keep equating it to food probably because I'm hungry, but um, it's like when you eat something and the first time you eat it, you're like, I don't know if I like this. And then you slowly start, you slowly, you know, consume it and you're like, I, I now crave this randomly. Um, and I, I think that that's kind of like what it is with the show, um, for, for me anyway. Yeah, um, it's a, it's an acquired taste. Nice. Do you actually want to acquire the taste for it? Yeah, I, I, that that's a good question. I agree with him. I didn't really like it, but I watched it because it was Doctor Who's universe, and it's like okay, well, if it does come back, it's like okay, let's see where it goes. Mm -hmm. But if it stays that violent, I probably won't continue. Yeah. Oh. <coughs> oh. <laughs> For everybody, um, doesn't it? It seems like every other episode was a mid-season or season finale. Like what you were saying earlier, they compacted it. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and I, is that a pretty decent? Just, I'm asking, like, yeah, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's a valid point. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, they could have extended some of the episodes over. I mean, they could have developed it. Like, yeah. for instance, the um, the flowers, the flesh eating flowers. I mean, that could have easily been, in my mind, three episodes. It's a bad and, wolf. Yes, right? Exactly. Yeah. They could have yeah. totally developed it, and I think it would have been great. I also I also just want to make the caveat that I binged it because I uh -huh. was watching Doctor Who, and um, I watched on my computer through BBC America, mm -hmm. and so. I kept seeing the ads for it. I was like, I remember hearing about Dragon Con last year, and so I binged all eight in a sitting. Mm, nice. And I think that's kind of why I liked it, because after a while, maybe it was just overloaded. 
so who binged it and who watched it every week? Because I watched it every week. I watched it every, I watched it every, week. every week. Okay. Okay. Because I wonder if the binging might make it work better because of the characters and getting to know. I don't know. Is, is that yeah, gonna? It's more like reading like all the Harry yeah. Potters in rapid succession. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Did binging did make Charlie more likable? No. Okay. I found it was very irritating. I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you. Yes. The little girl, the genius. She's very likable. Tanya. Yes, she is very likable. She's very likable. I wish that she was the, the the linchpin of the show, like that she was the primary character. Um, and I hope that if the if the writers are smart, they'll do that. And I think that the, they'll be smart if they dedicate like two episodes back to back for a character as the lead. And and I think that that was part of again that's part of the problem is that every episode it was like okay now this person's in charge now this per it's like who's the We're main character yeah. of the good. show. They did a good, very good job with Tanya um, showing the frustration of a 14-year-old who's forced to spend her time with 17-year-olds, and she knows, mm -hmm. no matter what they say, no matter how friendly and how nice they are, they're going to look on down her as a kid. Yeah. Because yeah. it's one heck of a difference being 14 and 17 emotionally. Uh, mm -hmm. You just, you just, you just. There's no way around that. And she's. Smart, but she's but more she's mature than they are. are. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. like that's the thing. Like. I think it's not. I, I think it's the question of uh, you know, emotional intelligence versus actual intelligence. Right. You know, uh, immaturity in, in that in that in that guise in that sense. You know, um, and in um, detained, right? The detention episode. Right. Like we really get to see yeah. her shine, and um, and I and, and I think that she's great. And and I, I I again, it's just like that episode. That could have been a two parter. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say that, that one of the major letdowns for me for the show was the villains. Like, some of them I was like, this is terrible. Um, and it, either it was the look or the fact that maybe they just didn't have enough of a big of a budget or um, like the Shadowkin, the, the shadow yeah, right? Yeah, the Shadowkin were, yeah, as we say back home, math. I was like... <laughs> yeah. uh, they, were, they were too dark. Like, I love the idea, and I wish that they had, if, like, that's a villain you could have kept for, like, two seasons, yeah. you know, and just, okay. like, revisited in different guys um, and, and gone there, you know. You, I could have, you could have left it out for, like, four episodes, and I would have been completely fine with it, um, which I think we, the problem was we would have, like, a Shadowkin episode, and then one without, a Shadowkin episode, one without, and it, yeah. just, it kept doing that, you know, yeah. I was just gonna say, I think that's really was the biggest problem. They tried to have too many monsters and too many bad guys, and it was like every episode it was something else instead of doing something to carry over. And then they could have built more into each character and their development as they had one foe and one thing to deal with. But it was just too much. There, there wasn't enough to just focus on and get behind and think, oh, they're trying to defeat blank. Mm -hmm. So again, monster of the week. Yeah, it was just too many. It's yeah. like yeah. suddenly all of these monsters are suddenly yeah. appearing. Mm -hmm. It's like um, they're on a hell now. I was waiting for Charlie to be like, yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, <clears throat> BBC America is pretty much on my TV on a daily basis. And so I, the buildup, waiting for it to come, and I found myself watching for sort of the um, Doctor Who pins, like for the where's the Doctor Who. I was so let down for mm -hmm. the first few episodes. I was not happy with the amount of violence that there was, and I did see those small things, you know, the small, you know. Uh, the board with the old teachers on it, and there was pink, and there was so much, you know, little little things. And then I get to the the finale, and I I'm like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> <laughs> and when do I get to find out more of what's going on? Yeah. So it's like the governors just just hang in there with no plan. It's like here, catch us. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. Here, catch this. Nothing. Well, we'll get back to you. All I, right. I have to tell you, I'm I'm feeling like this is class anonymous, and I'm feeling this warm sense of love. Right. <laughs> like, 
it's it's okay, Jesse. It's it, you're you're not a bad Doctor Who fan. It's okay, you know. So thank. I just want to tell everyone I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. And we'll go here and then over here. Yeah. So I feel like the um, the monsters would have been better if they were carried over from a few of them carried over from Doctor Who, so that the watchers knew what the monsters were, but the actors didn't know. Well, the actors did, but. The kids in class didn't know what they were or how to defeat them, so we could see that play out and we could see more of the connection from the two shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. I think that's a, that's a great point. And I think that, like, the, the metaphysics engine thing was, like, the TARDIS, you know, um, yeah. which yeah. I, I think it's like, what are you doing, dude? You know, like, like stop that. <laughs> like, well, like, that was a it was, very... It was a weird episode. It, it was, was really hard to follow. It was well named. The metaphysical engine's like, what? And, and I loved the cool part in there. Like, yeah. it was it was brilliant. Um, I think it was really well done, and it, and it gave her a, a interesting backstory, and it explained their race a little bit more, and, and I loved that part, but I felt like you could have taken that entire chunk and, like did something with it you know um what is it like uh, i think it's called the beast below episode from doctor the who yeah um okay. that's what it reminded me of and i was like all right like this is awesome and yummy but i wish it would have been the full you know full episode um so it's like moments like that it's like you just kind of threw through the kitchen sink in there you know what well, did you at the very end of the last episode where the governors we see the governors and mm -hmm. the head mistress whatever she's like punished and they turn and you see a weeping angel that was surprising mm -hmm. yeah. yeah they only link to doctor you know to the doctor who universe yeah and i i think that's a central theme like i we had talked about on the podcast how cool it would have been if we didn't want to do direct what if you were children of former companions yeah. that mm -hmm. kind of you know had this unique bond mm -hmm. of that your parents have gone explore this and you've always heard these stories and then Unfortunately, we lost Danny Pink, but you know, like him being, you know, a teacher or something on that, it would have been nice. Well, if you if you consider um, the whole thing about River Song having all her weird abilities and been basically a Time Lord because she's conceived in the in the vortex, well, if you walk away and you've drenched in the Arton energy, are yeah. your offspring going to be affected like that? Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I think you could have still. And, and it's easy to be a backseat, you know, writer. In a, that's what fandom is, I guess, in a lot of ways it comes down to. So, um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. I, I, I'm, I'm pulling for a second season because I, I'm hoping that they can build on this and they kind of, we know what worked, we know what didn't work, and let's kind of go forward. Mm -hmm. You had a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to totally agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. Totally love that idea and feel like you need to pitch it to someone. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the only the thing I was going to say, too, is uh, April, I guess, that's the one we haven't really talked about, and they tried yes. to make her the central character. I love I felt, April. Really? Because I thought she was a very weak character. And I actually grimaced every time I like, we focused on her. I was like, this is the last character I want to learn about. I liked her statement that nice is not weak, nice is strong. That's just good. I, th I thought that was a very, yeah. a very good standpoint. And it's like, yes, she's the girl that in the face of all the, I can use the term crap, I think, because uh, I just used it, the, the stuff that she was having to deal with and people threw her in the face and she ignored all the time, she still kept plowing on and she, you know, the stuff that she'd endured that a lot of people didn't know about, um, considering what her father tried to do to the family, it's like, yeah, she, as she said, a lot of therapy. Um, I, I liked her. I like I liked the transitions then to the you know the warrior aspect. It's like okay, I've been nice long enough. This is no longer time to be nice. Got the blades. Um, but Sophie Hopkins, the actress that 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 plays her, is one of the fastest rising actresses in the UK at the moment. She's been tagged for great things. So yeah. we'll we'll see with her. Gemma Alexander. Before they change anything else, improve anything else you guys are talking about, the theme song has got to go. <laughs> <laughs> to me, right. Uh, yeah. uh, to me, the, yeah. the I, I opening sequence reminded me of the Musketeers. Yeah. Totally. I first saw that, I'm like, wait a minute, is this just a revamp of the Musketeers? 
<laughs> with yeah. a different mu soundtrack. It's right? kind of the same for maybe the same production company made it because it is very similar. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird. You know, Demons. Has anybody seen the TV show Demons? It's a, it's another like yeah. te teeny show, um, and and it's got a, a, a more upbeat, like fast, faster song. And it, check it out. It's it's kind of in the same vein of class, um, and um, it has a really great opening. And I agree with you on that. And it, it's one of those like I want. I don't need all the like cut scenes of things, you know, as an opening. Like, and I think maybe that's just the Doctor Who fan in me um, because I, I personally don't need their giant faces coming on the screen like I'm okay with like the TARDIS flying around or just there being an orbital yeah. whatever on the screen and the title and stuff like cap occurring so, so I, I do agree with you on that one I, I apologize I don't remember which one of you said I think a couple of you said but another thing that as we pile on it <laughs> one of the things that Doctor Who is it's always about optimism, you know, positivity and you know, a, a fun quip here or there and, and we did not get a lot of that positivity and that that optimism and, and I understand they're building the show, but I think that's part of it is at least one of the reasons why I love the Doctor and, and watching the series so much is that um, you know, the doctor assumes he's going to win, right? And and that optimism is the things that I like seeing. Yeah, and it's like almost every episode, you're like, they're like, oh, great, we're going to die again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> woo, let's do this. Yay. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, Yay. it's right. Like, that's that's kind of how it feels. I or think the, there, is, there is humor there, but it's very dark. And yeah. a lot of it comes from Quill. Yes. Yeah. Quill yeah. has the best throw away put down lines and like I'm gonna gotta cut you down. Right. Yeah, she she is does a great thing on that role and, and this she has no patience in doing this. It, it's nice. So and and you know, actually I, I kind of understand her when Charlie and like I don't know if I'd want to protect Charlie either. <laughs> yeah, in the in the back. Um I don't know how you get a lot of humor and ease with teenage angst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like two You things. very good point. I think it's funny because I think teenage angst is funny, but like that's <laughs> that's just me. Um and, and I and not to not, not to like insult teenage angst in any way, but I think that as an adult looking back on like my teenage version of myself, I'm like, Wow, you were really obnoxious, you know? And I think that I like it makes me giggle like a little bit and feel nostalgic and and I think that I kind of I get that from you know from April and from and from Ram like being unsure to tell his dad about what's going on and um, identify with that and I really identified with that you know um, it, there's a real it's really hard to be an adult with your parents you know even at again at 35 I still have to remind myself and my parents that I am older. And, um, and that I'm, I'm good, you know, like I, I'm okay, you know, and I think that that's part of, that's part of growing up is, is that, that cusp. And I think that the show does do a great treatment of that. Um, so I think like the, the teenager inside of me like gets it, you know, like, oh, I feel you. Like I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Right. And, and I think, I think that's part of it. it. It's, it's kind of, it's either you, uh, my, my parents did watch the show and I talked to my mom about it and she, she said the same thing. She's just like, I feel like I'm drinking sour milk when I watch it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's an interesting way to put it. Um, but it, it, she's like, I don't identify with that, the teenage angst that's in it. So Joss, Joss Whedon really raised the bar on portraying teenagers because before yep. him, it was, you know, he just accepted that the teenage angst and that we didn't care. Now yeah. it's kind of like, oh, you can actually make that humorous. And I, I do find April a little annoying. I am going to put this out there. Like, I, I do. I, I Her angst, I just like, really? Mm -hmm. um, here and there, um, but but I appreciate what they what they had to do with her character because it's like let's just throw you a giant curveball. You're sharing heart. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> and then yeah. how are you going to deal with that? Yeah. You know? like, and, and also like Rob Thomas on Veronica Mars. You know they raise the bar of and so mm -hmm. there are great shows about this. So. Um, you know, like I said, I hope they're going to find their voice. I, I'm, I'm pulling for them, um, and we'll, And I agreed. I love the idea of some 
uh, not necessarily Cybermen or Daleks, you know, but some other Doctor Who monsters showing up would be really cool. Maybe Silurians. That, yeah. That yeah. class trip to the Gloucestershire Caves, it goes really bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Something yeah. like that. Um, I was just going to say that I was um, kind of surprised to see that Moffat was um, the writer for it. And I was wondering if if it does get um, approved for a second season, the likelihood of Moffat continuing on it. Actually, Moffat was not the writer. It was written, written and produced by a guy called Patrick Ness. Oh. Mm -hmm. And he's already announced, so he announced back in uh, June of this year, that if the show gets renewed, he's not writing it. Which may be a good thing or maybe a bad thing. But it certainly means things will be different. I think it would be really cool if um, the show was treated the way Chibnall plans on treating Doctor Who as um, having a, a, a writer's room um, treatment, which is a very different approach to writing shows. You know, um, previously Doctor Who has, has been either a, a writer's room as a show or it's been like hey you're a great writer L write us an episode um along with the producers or whoever the lead writer is of the show um doing you know the majority of, of, of it so Chibnall has announced that he wants a writer's room and that he doesn't want you know his ideas to be the sole driving force he wants it to be a collective experience of writing and crafting episodes so it wouldn't surprise me if you saw five names on, on an episode um that's written I mean we of course we'll see probably a few directly written by him um but I think that it would be really neat if we had that kind of same treatment going on with class. Yeah, um, and, totally agree. And I think that it it needs to be 13 episodes. <clears throat> I think that it was a disservice to the fans, of, uh, the, of the potential fans or a current fans, I mean, I'm a fan of it, um, that we didn't have 13. And I think that you could have taken out, you know, vignettes that were throughout the whole thing and, and done it. But I, I think what's interesting is that we have bookends of Doctor Who, mm -hmm. right? Because we have the Doctor in the first episode, and then we have the Weeping Angels at the end. I think it's kind of fascinating that the governors can create them. And that kind of, like, gives a whole nother, like, view that I have on all of the Weeping Angels episodes and how that might tie in for story arc and and I'm interested to see how that would be treated and addressed um, and I hope it's not a throwaway kind of thing um, and moving forward I think that it's going to be really interesting to see what's going to happen. But we yeah. got to remember there was a lot of stuff happened in that season finale. I mm -hmm. mean we had several, pe Ram's pe father died. Mm -hmm. um, Tanya's pe mother died. Tanya's mother apparently was, ki was killed. killed. Mm -hmm. Um, Her brothers were almost killed. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot, you know, whatever happens, it's like those characters are not going to be the same mm -hmm. when we open up. There's going to have, there's going to be some serious changes going on there. If yeah. you want to do April's public service. Shadow yeah. King body now. <laughs> right? April's yeah. in the Shadow King body now. Yes. Uh, that's going to be kind of hard to pass. Yeah. Um, it, it's crazy, like, 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 Ram from the very get go was really, like, dark. He was like, I'm just a footballer, and now I'm super complicated as a character. And now we have, at the end of the, you know, at the end, almost all of them have something very dark going on mm -hmm. with them. So are Charlie they... released all the angels, or the, the souls from the cabinet. Mm -hmm. Basically, the ultimate weapon was unleashed. Mateus has to cope with loving a murderer, basically, right? Um, and so all of them have something. My well, maybe Quill. I mean, well, but Quill can qu kill. Yeah, yeah, Quill yeah. can Quill's kill. Happy. You know, and and what kind of killer is she? You know, yeah. um, because like she, yes, yeah, she's portrayed as this warrior, but but what kind? You know, is she a bloodthirsty, maraudering, you know, kind, or is she a a hero that has that that kills kills for the greater good? You know, or something in between. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we don't know that she's the anti-hero. Like we we have, we don't know. So didn't, didn't they kind of say that her child and will kill her? Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but if if being in a disguise of a human form does that is that going to change what's going to happen to her? I don't she know. did mention that on her own planet 
they had the technology to bypass that, but it was just some social trope that they had maintained. And I don't remember if you said it was a stupid trope or not. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe she'll take advantage of the technology she's got access to here to not get killed. I, I hope so, because as I said, she's probably my favorite character. And, and maybe the governors will do something with the baby, and it'll be like Rosemary's baby, you know? Like, I don't know. If there is a second season, I hope they don't water her down. I, I really don't. I want her to say the same, the same acerbic, bitchy, sarcastic person, because that's, that's her charm. Yeah, I agree. Or um, the, uh, what was the character that kidnaps Amy when she's pregnant? Oh, um, uh, the shadows. Oh, that wasn't it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. yeah, they were you know what I'm talking about, ladies? I have. Yeah, the guy that was a shapeshifter and he was locked into one shape, so they told him. But that was a whole like like troop of people, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and 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 that was kind of left alone, you know, yeah. a little bit. So it's like, okay, what if they're them? You know, like what if the governors? Are these figures that are that are involved? You know what I mean? Are behind the scenes, and they yeah. have this other, other governmental thing going on, right? Like the anti-unit, you know, kind of thing. Um, oh, I like that anti-unit twist. You know that's, that's nice. You know, like your Spectre, like yeah. You know, like, <laughs> you're, there's all these. There's all, England looks all nice and calm and passive, and there you got you got the unit. You got Torchwood, you got the governors, yeah. right? you can't, the watchers, you can't move, but you trip over a group of these, you know. I am excited about the the finding out about this, you know, what their their plan is and, and why Coal Hill is so important and and so I think that's is an an interesting mystery to explore. In common with Torchwood, where there's a rift for rift. some reason. Right. Yeah. And it's like it's like okay, like what is this? What kind of rift is this? What is the deal deal with it? And, you know, is it Torchwood ask? Is it primeval ask? You know, is it like how is it going to be treated? Is it going to be monster of the week kind of thing? Which I think so far yes. So um, it's going to be an interesting ride. Hopeful. My my hope is it that it gets another season, and if it doesn't, that it get, goes to an audio. Either yeah. it goes to an audio, like Big Finish picks it up. Um, I think would be a great idea. Or a comic book form. Or a comic yeah. book. Comic book form would be fantastic for yeah. it. It almost needs it, you know? Yes. Um, or even like if they did a comic book like in between every episode. <laughs> yes. Would be really cool. Very cool. Yeah. Like they did Heroes. Right? <laughs> so it's pretty interesting um, as far as all that's concerned. So... I think that moving forward, uh, we'll be surprised at what we're going to be faced with. I really don't like Charlie. Um, I wish I did. I want to like him, like I want I want to, um, but I don't. So I don't I don't know what they're going to do and and who they're going to pick as their central character. But the thing to remember is, unfortunately, the ratings were very low in the UK. Yeah, which does never bodes well. So it just oh, depends man. on... Do we know how they were for BBC America? Um, haven't heard anything about that. Okay. I mean, no, if they can sell released. it overseas, that uh, will help out, but... At least as far as the first episode, I don't know about the rest, but uh, since it aired directly after the season premiere of Doctor Who, it lost over half the viewers Oops. Yeah. No way. So and typically, yeah. your figures go down with any show yeah. after you're in the first episode. Yeah, so the whole was not probably what they were hoping. Yeah. yeah. The problem is is when you when you watch Doctor Who and then you immediately watch another show right after it, like it's like no. the time slot and then you and then you're, you're <laughs> like, Why am I sticking around? you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it would have been probably smarter if they had aired class first and then yeah. done um, Doctor Who. Yes, yeah, you, and you, I think you, that would I think that would have given it momentum. Um, I think if they're smart, what they'll do is run it again to see how it would test outside of when Doctor Who was right. airing and just do a rerun like release of it. And just be like, okay, maybe it was just the fact that it was going against Doctor Who, and it's a spinoff that it didn't do so well. And let's go ahead and test the market again to see whether or not people will pick up on it. And if they were to put it in a lineup with like Buffy or or even Star Trek or yeah. something like that, that it would 
it honestly, like, to be real, like it honestly might shine a little bit. Well, and you know, we have this dark time right now between new who mm -hmm. and you know how much nicer would it have been if you'd had that like okay you know after you take a break then like okay now we're going to do class you know like we might have been oh, okay it's doctor who universe versus well you know i've got my fill of doc you know i got my shot of doctor who this week so now that i can move on to something else yeah. right in, like in january or something when everybody's stuck inside yeah yeah. yeah, or even if, like, they did the season finale and then they did, like, a preview of the show. Yes. Like, after the, or in the middle as, like, a commercial. And right. then the following weekend, or maybe two weeks after, I would wait two weeks, two weeks after and then show it, it probably would have gotten momentum. So I think it's going to be interesting. My hope is that we, at least we have something because I have too many questions I need answered. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and besides, we need another panel next year. Right? Yeah, sure. Um, to, to just to talk about it in general, but um, we really appreciate y'all uh, being here. Um, please rate us on the app if you've not joined um, any of our um, social media groups. We are really active as a community. We have about two thousand, three thousand people on our Facebook group, um, and we do do stuff throughout the year. So if you're if you're local and you live locally, um, we do like a picnic and bowling, and we go. To get together at a pub when the episode airs, or somebody will show it, show it on uh, an episode at their house or something like that. Um, we also have our charity bucket for um, our charity this year, which is the Special Olympics. So we're trying to fill it up. So if you have any loose change, you're really well, exactly. that would be really great. You should have some loose um, change in your pocket by now. Yes. Right. Um, also, if you don't know about this wonderful convention, it's our track sponsor. They're Hulanta. Um, they are a local Doctor Who convention. It's super fun. Um, this year they have Louise Jameson and Rachel, I can never say her last name. I want to say it's a lolly, but I, 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 I suspect yeah. that's wrong. Yeah, um, and, and, and they have their cards are up front, and they're also selling memberships um, for a discounted price of $40 this weekend. So it's a really great opportunity, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and nice intimate not, panels like this. more laid back. Um, easy going, easy family, going. family friendly, uh, yes. yeah, super family friendly, and the hotel is like super it is. cheap. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's nice. It's not like like cheap cheap. Like it's right. it's really it's really they're nice. And they're good folks. So. And um, I'd love like for you guys. I have a card up here from Next Stop Everywhere. Uh, we are going through a series of re we are visiting regeneration episodes between now. So we are going through. Classic Doctor's Regeneration. We just did the Master Trilogy. So I, I'd love to get a couple of new listeners and let me know what you think. So cards up here if you're interested in checking it out. And um, thank you so much for yeah. having us on there. And thank you guys. You guys were you. absolutely wonderful. Thanks, All right. Folks. Have a good one. Thank Be safe. We've got lots of fun. Thank you. 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 What? I've noticed that. Did you have any other? Just went one style and that's it. That's it. I just put it up. So is this? Is this you?